The first question, let's draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the block. Uh, labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the block. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that. So the force that we should always start with is the weight. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have weight, right? And then now let's check whether the object is resting on a surface or not. Clearly the object is on a horizontal surface. So we're going to have a normal force because that surface is going to exert a perpendicular force on the object. And then now is the surface rough or not? If it is rough, then we are going to indeed have frictional force, right? If you look at the question statement here, uh, we have a block moving at a constant speed over a rough horizontal surface right uh, you can see here uh, so we're going to have frictional force in the opposite direction of the applied force so we have f here which is our applied force right frictional force is always parallel to the surface it's never at an angle right and then now the second equation 3.2 pretty much turning forward let's state newton's first law of motion in words so it says that a body will remain in its state of rest or motion at constant velocity a body will remain in its state of rest or motion at constant velocity unless a non-zero resultant force acts on it now moving on to 3.3 3.3 says let's calculate the magnitude of the force f right so we're looking for the magnitude of the force f so now let's read our question statement so that we can better understand what is going on so we have a constant force f uh, that pulls a 50 kg block so we have a mass there of 50 kgs and then uh, it is pulling it at a constant speed so what does constant speed tells us it tells us that the f net is equal to zero the forces acting on the object are balanced and then over a rough horizontal surface so as we already know we're supposed to have frictional force and then the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the surface is 0.4 so we have a coefficient of kinetic friction which is 0.4 right so the key takeaway here is that the object is moving at constant speed so the forces along the x are balanced just like the forces along the y are balanced right so what does that tell us that tells us that uh, the frictional force is equals to the x component of the applied force the frictional force is equal to the x component of the applied force because uh, that applied force it has a x component and a y component right and then we know fully well that uh, we have friction here right so the object is moving a constant speed so the frictional force shall be equal to the x component of the applied force right uh, but then what is uh, the frictional force we know fully well that the frictional force is the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force and that should be equals to uh, the x component of the applied force uh, we are given the coefficient of friction it is said to be 0.4 right and then multiplied by the normal force now we just uh, need to determine what the normal force is and uh, we're going to be able to solve our problem right uh, so let me just show you something here on the uh, left hand side if you have a force that is pointing up then the normal force is going to be the weight multiplied by the y component of that force right and then if you have a force that is pointing down then the normal force is going to be the weight plus the y component of that force and then if your force is not an angle and it is just horizontal then you just have the normal force being equals to the weight right uh, so here we have a force that is pointing up so the normal force is supposed to be the weight uh, minus the y component of our applied force right and this will be equals to uh, the x component of the applied force so we're gonna have 0.4 multiplied by the weight the weight is mass multiplied by gravity right so we're going to have 50 multiplied by 9 point eight minus the y component of the applied force so we're gonna have f 
sine of theta. But then we know fully well that the angle is 20 degrees. It's given to us, right? So we're going to have 20 degrees being equal to the x component. So that is f cos of 20 degrees. Now we have 0 0.4 multiplied by uh, this term right if you put that in your calculator you're gonna get one nine six right and then minus now we see in 0 0.4 multiplied by f sine of 20 so we're gonna have 0 0.4 multiplied by sine of 20 which will be equals to uh zero point so we have zero point one three six eight f f is an unknown so we're supposed to leave it like that and then this will be equal to f multiplied by cos of 20. so what is cos of 20? cos of 20 is 0 0.9397 f right because f is a constant now let's take this term uh, to the left hand side uh, the sign is going to change right so we're going to have 196 being equals to so we have 0 0.9 397 plus 0 0.1368 and uh, that is equals to 1.0765f so what do we do now we divide both sides by the coefficient of f right because uh we're looking for the value of uh, f so 196 divided by 1.0765 uh, is equals to 182.07 so that will be 07 newtons right so the force applied is 182.02 so the force applied is 182.07 newtons uh, let's move to 3.4 we will be looking for the normal force, right? Uh, so we've already deduced that in this situation, the normal force should be equal to the weight minus uh, the force applied, the Y component of the force applied. So what is the weight? The weight is 50 multiplied by 9.8. Now we just need uh, the Y component of the force applied. So we're going to have now we know fully well that uh, the force applied is 182.07 and then the y component we take sine of the angle which is 20 degrees meaning that uh, our normal force is going to be 427 427.73 newtons right and then now on to the last question 3.5 we're looking for the frictional force right uh, the frictional force is equal to the coefficient multiplied by the normal force the coefficient we know fully well that it is 0 0.4 and then we just calculated the normal force not long ago so now it's just a matter of substituting it here right so we're gonna have 427.73 which is equal to 171 so we have 171 point is zero nine two newtons